Class, pay attention. This is Ballistics 101. Class 1, subject Sweden. Who out there can give me a well-known fact to do with Sweden and guns? Yes, Tony at the back there. Hand up straight away. Well done. Abba. Right, I don't think Abba's got anything to do with guns. Granted, it is Swedish, but it's nothing to do with guns. Yes, Tony, I hear what you say, but I really don't think the blonde-haired one in ABBA was a Russian sniper. Shall we move on? Anyone else? Yes, Claire. No, I don't think King Arthur came from Sweden. It's a good try, but no. Right, anyone else? Ted. Go on, Ted. Ted, we've been going about a minute. All right, well, if you need the toilet, off you go then. Next. Dubber. No, I don't think you can go elephant hunting in Sweden. No, I don't think you can go elephant hunting in Sweden with a blow dart gun. It's not going to happen. Right, can we have any sensible suggestions, please? Yes, at the back. Johan, go ahead. Well done, Johan! Correct! FX air guns! Now, if the rest of you were paying attention, there's a big clue on the desk. I'm going to talk to you about FX air guns, and in particular, the brand new Impact. The history of FX air guns is quite simple. Millions of years ago, there was an ice age that engulfed Sweden. Once that had thawed, not a lot happened. But then Frederick Axelson was born and he wanted to develop the best air guns that he possibly could. And that's what he's done. Hence, the FX Impact. And I'm going to tell you all about it today. One of the biggest things that people talk about with the FX Impact is the shot count and the consistency, particularly in the sub 12 foot pound version. So I've tested that to the extreme. And in the bottom corner of the video right now, you can see me doing it. And that's going to run all the way through this review. I'm going to give you the results at the end. The FX Impact does have a twing of the AR assault weapon look. And it's all milled from a single block of aluminium Every component is slotted into the main body of the rifle, tightly and with very little room to spare. And it's the finishing touches, like the gauges all being the right way up, that really make a difference. The skeleton look has become very popular in the past few years, and this is the daddy of them all. Every action is bare bones, open. You can see what is happening. And talking of being open, if you're outside of the UK, this rifle can come with much more power than our restricted sub 12 foot pounds. Also, if you're outside of the UK, you have the ability to adjust the rifle and fettle with it. It does come out of the factory set just right, so I don't recommend it messing with it. But if you know better, there are lots of knobs and screws you can adjust. However, as I say, in the UK, all those power adjustments have been locked down, except for the power wheel on the side, which will allow you to range the power over a band of around 200 feet per second, depending on whether you're using 177 or 22 caliber. So I've started my shot count test in 22 down in the corner there, but just suppose 22 to you is a dirty word. Don't mention it in your household. Who shoots a 22? It's got to be 177. Well, that's no problem. I can do 177. I just need to whip this out because this is my 177 barrel. I'm going to show you how to change my 22 into a 177. Firstly, make sure the gun is safe. I've got nothing in there to shoot. So I'm going to flick it to safe and then I'm going to pull the loading lever back. On the rear of the rifle, undo this thumb turn. 
you don't need to take it all the way out just needs to just stay in then you can go ahead and slide your barrel out very gently taking your time like that then by moving the cocking lever forward or back ever so slightly you want to be able to expose this allen bolt just here this holds your pellet probe which is here which pushes forward to engage the pellet into the barrel it also allows the air to transfer up through the pellet probe to push the pellet forward but obviously if this is 2-2 we've got to change it to 177 gaining access to that pellet probe is easy just slide your shoulder pad down because we're going to get it out this way here you can see the rear of the pellet probe and so it doesn't drop when we undo it I'm going to just slot in this allen key which enables me to grab it in a moment undo the allen screw till it's nearly all the way out or until you can feel the pellet probe becoming loose once you've done that you can sort of give it a push it still wants just a little bit more and a little bit more there we go and out it comes and yeah I did drop it after all that out comes the 2-2 pellet probe and then you simply do the reverse and you put in the 177 one you can't go wrong because you have to line up that allen screw with this hole here so mount it on there and then simply slide it in and do the allen screw back up as long as you've lined that hole up it's going to do up first time there we go then you take that away tree cutting now you've got to slide your 177 barrel back in but you've got to be careful with this when you push the barrel through the main housing of the impact there are two o-rings here we don't want to damage those and when the barrel does go in you want to line up this area here with that thumb turn on the side because this is where that thumb turn is going to seat gently gently don't go ramming it in And when you get just inside the housing at the back, you feel for a little click when you're in. There we go. And you tighten the thumb screw up. And that's it. You push the bolt forward and your impact is now a 177. And it was a 2-2 a couple of minutes ago. I've got two magazines, the 2.2 is an 18 shot and the 177 is a 21 shot. They're really easy to load, but there is a knack to it. Basically, you spin the top all the way round like that. Then you flip it over and you drop the first pellet in tail first. Put your finger over the hole and then start loading round you go like this that's it now the gun doesn't know whether you're shooting a 177 or a 22 
it simply releases the same squirt of air every time. And that air is regulated going into the barrel simply by different porthole sizes. The FX with the barrel retracted is 73 centimeters in length. With the barrel extended, it's 80 centimeters in length. The side lever cocking is effortless, not spring loaded, it's all down to you. And yes, that extendable barrel or shroud really turns the gun from a barking dog into a back guard friendly plinker. Safety on the right hand side, just like the AR, and Picatinny rails everywhere. On my top rail, I've got the ATN X Site 2 HD, along with my IR torch. And this has brought me great success in the past few months. I'm going to cover 2 2 at 20 yards later, it's part of my big test. But first, let's do 177 at 30 yards, 21 shots at 30 yards. I fired two for a sighter because I actually filmed the 50 yard shooting first. And here's my results. 21 minus 2 for a sighter is 19. So I have 19 177 pellets through this hole, which is less than half an inch. Now, let's do the same at 50 yards. I actually shot twice. On the left, I have six outside the half inch group, and on the right, I have seven outside the half inch group from a shot total of 21. And from a terrible shooter like me, that's awesome. And now if you don't mind, and if your coffee's not too cold, let's do 2-2 two -two at 50 yards. I'm going to dip my toe into the water of preference. For me, I like the impact in 2-2. Why? Well, I've just bonded with it since day one. The 177 works fine, but the 2-2 seems less floaty in flight. More accurate more of the time. That I'm sure is down to the wind. That 177 can get blown around a lot. And whether the smooth twist barrels prefer the slightly bigger pellet, so they've got something more to bite into in that final moment. I don't know. I could be completely wrong with what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, I put the 2-2 barrel back on every time. And as for pellets, don't waste your time with anything other than JSB form. They come labeled in all sorts of different ways. Day State call them the sovereigns. JSBs are JSBs, but use them it will make a big difference in the accuracy from your impact.
And here's my 50 yard results. And I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's a tear there. But that's six pellets outside of the half inch group. Which means from a magazine of 18, I've got 12 through that half inch group just there at 50 yards. And that's with a sub 12 air rifle. What have I missed? The trigger. Mine's a delight, set perfectly, but you can adjust it should you wish to. The shoulder pad adjusts up and down, and the gun unscoped weighs 3.2 kilos, but it doesn't feel like it. And to finish the tour, the regulator pressure is displayed on a gauge on the underside. There is one slight faux pas on the design of the impact, and that's around filling. Now FX supply their own foster adapter, or filling adapter. Mine isn't connected to a pipe at the moment, just for ease of demonstration. But if you don't use the FX supplied one, when you come to fill the gun, the collar, which is on a regular foster adapter, will disappear inside the gun. Now FX's is slightly longer look. If you use a regular foster adapter, you'll need a pair of long nose pliers to get it off again. But the FX one has this slightly bigger collar. So you can just get your fingers around it and release it. Let's get back to the shot count test. It's been running in the bottom of the screen all the way through this video. It's speeded up footage because it's actually two hours long. I've done this several times now, and I have to admit this is the first time I've managed to capture the whole thing in one go. If you wish to watch the entire footage, I have uploaded it. Here is a link. It's on the screen now and in the description box below. But you are going to waste two hours of your life if you want to go and watch it. But I need to give you the results. I need to tell you that from just below a 250 bar charge on the impact in 2.2 sub 12 foot pounds, I got 720 shots. I'm going to say that again. 700 and 20 shots. That's 40 magazines of 18 shots each. And this is the graph showing the feet per second. Now, chronographs make mistakes, and I have been doing this for a long time. I've done it many, many times. I maybe haven't caught every single shot of the 720, but I have done it enough to be able to spot where the gun drops in power. And it's normally around magazine 34 or 35. But what about the target? Well, let me show you. On the floor below the target, there's a lot of lead. And then behind the target itself, there's even more lead including a lovely pinpoint hole in the back of the metal pellet catcher. And the target itself, let's take a closer look at that. The target shows shrapnel damage. These are bits of pellets actually bouncing back off the pellet catcher. But the target tells a really interesting story. And it says, matched with the footage, that from around magazine 34, this point here, things do go a little bit south and the feet per second does drop off. But up to magazine 34, you've got everything through a one inch hole. And when I say 34 magazines, that's 34 times 18, which is 612 shots through that hole there. My FX impact is straight off the shelf at FX air guns. There's nothing special about it other than I got two barrels with mine. But I do know that in the UK at the moment, they are as rare as hen's teeth, and it is causing a little bit of frustration. I hope that changes in the future. But in the meantime, I've got to leave you with my thoughts on the FX Impact. It's accurate. It's got a massive shot count. In fact, one of the biggest I've ever seen. It's multi-caliber and hardcore good looking. I want you to imagine being married to one of the women or men that you see on the internet every day and lust after. 
and that they come home to you wearing latex every evening and even wear it on the school run. It's wrong to all those around you. But we can all dream and this is the one big dirty dream coming true and you can own it. It's quite simple. All your mates are jealous. Mm.